So remember, we're obviously we don't want to show the other player what one of the player's moves is unless both of them have gone. So like we want to know what our move is, but we can't know what the other player's move is until we've both made a move. So to do this, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start by just getting both player moves. So we're gonna say game dot get underscore player underscore move. We're gonna get move zero, and we'll actually we'll copy this and just do move two and change this to one. So we'll start by getting the moves. And then now we're going to check if we should show those moves, if we should show waiting or if we should show locked in. Okay. So to do this, we're going to say if game dot both went. Okay. Uh, like that, what we're going to say is we're going to say text one equals font dot render. And we're just going to use the same font as before. And what it's going to be is move one comma one comma, and we'll make this black. So zero, zero, zero. Okay, and we'll copy this and we'll do the same thing except text two is going to be equal to move two. So essentially this is saying if both of the players have gone, well, we can show their moves because they both made them. So let's do that. And it's just rendering that font and we'll display the font after uh, you'll see how that works. So now otherwise, if both players have not gone, what we need to do is we need to actually let me just check something for a second is we need to determine if we're going to show locked in, meaning the other player actually has gone, but we're not going to show their move, or if we're going to show waiting, which means the other player hasn't gone. So to do this, we're going to say if game dot P one went and P equals equals zero. So this is saying if uh, we have gone and it's our current, uh, like we are the player, we're player one. So if player one's gone and we are player one, what we're going to do is we're going to say text one equals font dot render move one, which is the move we've done, which is fine if we see that. And then we're going to say one and color zero, zero, zero. Okay. L if game dot P two went and uh, is this what it is? Actually, sorry. Game dot P one went. You, you guys will see how this works in a second. What we're going to say, we're going to say text two equals the same thing. Now this might be confusing, but essentially what this is doing is it's saying if player one is gone and we are player one, we're going to say, uh, if I spell render correctly, render like that, render, sorry, I got interrupted there. Okay. So if player one is gone and we are player one, then we want to show underneath like your move, what our move is. Otherwise, what we want to show is we want to show that, uh, like locked in. So we're going to change this to locked in underneath opponents move because it means player one went, but it's not us. So it's not our move. So that means we want to show it under opponent's move. So you'll see how this works. We're going to say locked in like that. Okay. All right. Now we're just going to do uh, else. So this actually just stands for if uh, game dot P one hasn't like if they haven't moved yet, we're going to just going to say text two equals uh, waiting. So we'll say waiting dot dot dot. I believe that's correct um actually sorry these all need to be text one my bad okay all right i know this is confusing but we'll go through it after all right so we're gonna actually copy this and we're just gonna change everything to two so this is gonna be p2 this is gonna be one this is gonna be two it's gonna be two and it's gonna be two and this is gonna be two as well and let me just make sure that i did that correctly i believe i did okay sweet and now we are going to actually show these. We're going to blit these on the screen. And we're actually really close to finish, guys. So to do this, we're going to say if p equals equals one. So if we're player one, what we'll do is say win dot blit, and we'll say text two. And then where we're going to show it, we're going to show it at a hundred and three fifty. Okay. Now we'll copy this. So control D, and we'll blit one. Except instead of at a hundred, we're going to change this to four hundred. Now we're just going to put an else. So if we're not player one, clearly we must be uh, player zero. So we're just going to reverse these player one, player two. Now, the reason we're doing this is because this is going to be uh, where like player one and player two's moves are shown on the screen. So we want it to make so that for each of our clients, rather than saying like player one, player two, and having one of the clients have their move on the right side and one of them have it on the left side, we want it to be the same for each client. You guys will see how this works when we actually run the thing. So let's actually just uh, let's add in drawing the buttons. So to draw the buttons, we could uh, we could draw them in this else statement. Actually, that might be better. Yeah, let's do it inside of this this else. Okay, so we're gonna say for 
btn in buttons. We're just going to say btn.draw and give it a win. And I think that's actually all we need to do. And lastly, we're just going to update the display. So pygame.display.update. Now, assuming I didn't make any critical errors, this should actually be working. So I know this has been a lot of code and a lot of writing, but I think I've kept it to just about an hour now, actually. Um, and that's actually a pretty decent time for creating a game like this. So you guys will see how this works out. Okay, so let's try running our server and see if we get any errors first of all. Okay, server, waiting for a connection, server started. Good sign so far. Okay, clients, let's try running a client. So I'm gonna do client, oh, name P is not defined. Win game P, ah, okay. So what we're gonna do for client, this is a really easy fix, just change this to player. And I might have to change, oh yeah, up here when I do redraw game window as well, we gotta do win um, game and player. Okay, so fix that. All right, client run, waiting for player. All right, good sign. Let's run another one. And would you look at that? Okay, they both launch in now. So you saw that waiting for player showed up, but as soon as we are ready, now both of them are showing up. Okay, so this should be player one. This should be player zero or player uh, player one, player two, right? Okay, so let's try this now. Rock. Ah, ran out of input. Self.client. I received 2048. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at why this might be. Uh, ah, so I think I might have find, found the issue. I'm actually, I don't know if this is the issue exactly, but we do need to fix this. Uh, where I do game.reset inside of server here, it actually needs to be reset went, because uh, that's what I called it inside here, reset went. So we just gotta make sure we do that. Okay guys, so really silly error here actually. Um, the issue was on the server side here, I'm calling play, right? Like game.play. And so if, actually I need to get rid of this. I was just printing out the exception so I can see what it was. Uh, but essentially play doesn't actually exist because I misspelled something on game. I misspelled it. I misspelled the player, it should be play. So that was the issue I was running into. Um, it just, I, it was very difficult to see because it was just accepting it and not like not printing anything out, just continuing to run the server so I couldn't find it. Uh, but essentially if we run the server and we run the two clients now, we should have everything working. I haven't actually tested it, so let's pray. Uh, if I go paper, sweet. So it goes paper here. We're not getting locked in over here, so that might be an issue, but let's see if we make something here, then it's since you lost and you won. Okay, so we have a slight issue, but it's pretty easy fix. Let's just go up to uh, client, just look through. We're just probably messing something up in the drawing code here. So, oh, that would make sense. Well, we're not actually end up drawing. Yeah, so this, if P equals equals one, this just needs to tap back one, um, one indentation level. And now we should have everything actually working fine. So let's try this now, client, client, and let's go rock. Okay, so that works, but it's not doing the locked in for some reason. So let's check this, this locked in portion. I just close that server and make sure that this is actually working. Ah, so that needs to be P2 went. And oh, if this one should be working, that was what's confusing. Okay, so actually, so that one just need to be P2 went, game.p2 went. Um, let's try this server and let's go client and let's run it again. And go scissors, locked in, sweet. So that's actually working and the game is pretty well finished. All we gotta do is add a menu screen and then we're gonna be done. So now let's go scissors, 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 scissors. That's not correct. We got to fix that as well. Okay. <laughs> I thought I had everything working guys. I really thought so. Ah, okay. So I actually, I do, I do know the issue. It was, it's pretty straightforward. So in main here, when we check the, uh, let's see here, the winners, where do we check winners? If it equals equals one equals equals negative one. Um, ah, okay. So game dot winner needs brackets. Of course it does. <laughs> so we need to add that. So obviously just some silly errors, guys. So server's running right now. Let's run these clients. See if everything is indeed working as as it's supposed to be now. Okay, so let's try this. Paper, locked in, scissors. You lost, you won. Yay, okay, everything's working. Okay, paper, paper. Tie game, sweet, okay. So you guys can obviously mess around with the timing, but you can see how this is working. So the only last thing to do now is watch this. If I disconnect, it disconnects both of them. So what we're gonna wanna do now, if that happens, is instead of uh, just completely like exiting the game, we're gonna wanna bring them to a menu screen where they can just click to reconnect. And this is a really, this is actually really easy to do. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna define another function. 
I'm going to call this menu underscore screen. Okay, and in here, all we're going to do is have a really basic while loop that just checks if you click something and all it's going to do there is click the uh, run that main function. So we're going to do is going to say run equals true. We're going to say while run. Okay, and then in here, we're going to say for event in pi game dot event dot get and then obviously we're going to check if they click exit so if event dot type equals equals pi game dot quit then we will do is just do pi game dot quit run equals false otherwise if they click any key so we'll say if event dot type equals equals pi game dot and we'll just say uh, mouse button down so we'll actually just get it they'll click the mouse button then what we'll do is we'll simply say run equals false and at the bottom of run equals false, what we're going to do is we're just going to call main. So all this is going to do, and we'll call menu underscore screen here. So we'll say while true, um, comma, menu screen. Okay, and I'll go through this in a second. We're going to say while true, menu screen. Okay, so what we're going to do is in menu screen, if they click something, we're going to call the main function, which is simply going to, uh, what do you call it, do... All of this stuff in here and then if they exit out of the main function so if you say like run equals false because they disconnected it'll just rerun the menu screen which means that they'll be prompted to reconnect to a new game awesome what we'll do in here is we'll add a clock as well so we'll say clock equals pi game dot time dot clock give it a tick so clock dot tick 60 uh, we'll do we'll just draw something in here. We don't need to use the redraw window function. Uh, we'll just do font equals pi game dot font dot sys font. In here we'll go comic sans. We'll go sixty, and then we're just going to render some text. We'll say text equals font dot render. In here we'll simply say click to connect or click to play exclamation point one some nice red text and we can just continually actually we can just window fill um so window fill and we'll just fill it with white zero 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 or what am i saying gray actually 128 128 and we should just where is win do i define it up here somewhere yes i do so that's sweet wins up there so what we can do is just fill the window run into this while loop Put some text on the screen. Um, we may actually have to fill this every frame. Let's get rid of one of those brackets I created. So let's fill this every frame actually. Okay, so we'll fill it. We will blit this font. So let's say win.blit text. And you know what, for right now, I don't want to deal, we'll just do it statically. We'll just do like 150. So it's not at the top of the screen. Actually, let's go 100, 200. Okay, we'll go pi game dot display dot update like that then if they click something what should happen is it should break this loop they should be brought to the main thing and yeah that should hopefully be working for us so let's try this client click to play okay a little a little sketchy on the click to play but let's see if we click to play okay waiting for player so this is what actually what I wanted so it says waiting for player we're gonna wait for someone else to connect okay boom connected sweet so now we're ready so let's just run a game let's go rock scissors now let's just see what happens if we click X. This one goes to the menu screen where it says click to play and it can be, um, what do you call it? Play against someone else, right? And that's exactly what we wanted. We may also want to add like a back button to go back, but I'll leave that to you guys. So guys, I'm going to leave the tutorial here. Um, if you guys have any questions or run into any bugs or anything, please let me know. This is by no means like a full complete game. There's still obviously a lot of things that could be added to this and I might continue this series later, but I think for now that's probably enough. I hope that you guys learned how to make an online game. I find this stuff really freaking cool and really interesting how you can have like a ton of different clients connecting together. And you know, if you guys want to play against me, using this i'd be happy to um put this on an external server release it maybe do a live stream where i play against some of you guys i think that'd be really interesting and cool and some of you mentioned that you might want to do that so with that being said if you guys enjoyed the series please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video and with that being said i'll see you guys in another video